Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. Sorry, one sec. No way. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just wanted to say thank you guys for 100,000 subscribers uh, and just really excited to keep this thing going. A lot of great ideas I hope to make in the near future. So thank you guys for following along. You might have heard maybe once or twice before of a little YouTuber known as Mr. Beast. Well, Mr. Beast, I'm always like super impressed by all of his crazy ideas. And one thing that I thought was particularly interesting was a video that he posted a few months back just called Hi Me in Five Years. He recorded this five years ago and scheduled it to upload, you know, whenever five years passed. I wanted to take a little bit of a programmer spin on that. And so we are gonna be writing a program that will automatically post a video to my second channel that I created very recently, whenever that channel hits 1,000 subscribers. Something fun to do, a cool programming project, and I think with any programming project, and if you really wanna learn and get a lot out of things that you work on, you wanna have fun doing it. So the task, automatically publish a YouTube video when a channel hits 1,000 subscribers. So how can we do this? Well, I think with any programming project, you wanna take kind of a big idea and break it up into smaller and smaller components. So with this type of project, I think there's a couple different areas that we can think about splitting it up into. Um, so there's two real main components that I see, and that is one, we first need to be able to uh, write code that can turn a YouTube video from let's say private or unlisted to public. So that's one aspect of this project. And there's really two ways that we can go about this. So taking kind of the big idea, we split it into what can we do on the YouTube side to make private to public. Uh, and then there's a couple different options here. First off, there's a YouTube API. So that's definitely the thing that my brain goes to immediately. But we can also do something where we use like a Selenium web driver to automatically like do the login process and do things kind of on a web browser based side of things. But generally my recommendation is if there's a API available, you should try that first before going the web driver route. And then so the second aspect of this project, we have the YouTube API stuff on one side. Then the other side is we need to write code that can periodically run and check what the current subscriber count is. And then when that number hits 1000, it should automatically upload a video. And we could get even more fancy with this we could say like, okay, if you're really close to hitting that 1000, it should check more frequently. If you're farther away, it can just check less frequently. So maybe that's something we'll factor into our, our program. So in approaching this task, my kind of first step was just typing in YouTube API documentation. And that took me to Google's, you know, reference guides, but I honestly, didn't really feel like reading through and just getting going from that alone. Uh, I'm a big fan of tutorial videos as well. So I went into YouTube and just typed in like YouTube API Python and stumbled upon a series of videos that Corey Schaefer made on the subject. I found these super, super useful. So I recommend if you wanna do a YouTube project, check these videos out. Uh, I started with his getting started video and that really allowed me to understand the basics of working with the YouTube API, kind of how, how I could actually take the API docs that YouTube provides and do some simple stuff with them and get kind of the API token I needed to do that stuff. So with that, I could see all the videos I posted, my current subscriber count. So it got me a bit of the way there to turning videos from private to public. But the challenging part is that with just a simple YouTube API token, you don't have enough permissions to do more complex stuff like take a video from private to public. So for that, luckily, Corey Schaefer's last video on the, the subject was about OAuth tokens with the YouTube API. And this allows you to do more sophisticated stuff. Like you could, through the API, change your thumbnail, change the description, write a comment, all sorts of like more nitty gritty stuff with your YouTube channel. And this includes seeing and changing the current visibility status of your video. So it allows you with that OAuth token to take a video from private to public if you use the right API functions. So using Corey Schaefer's code as a starting point, I authenticated my account with the YouTube API, and then I just looked up the functions that allowed me to see video permissions. I found the exact video that I'd already posted on the channel that was private, and then was able to kind of just play around with turning that video from private to unlisted 
as kind of a sanity check that I could do this through the API. Ultimately, when this code becomes live, it will take a private video and go public, but for testing, it was just easy enough to go private to unlisted. So this is really similar to the video I posted recently on how to automatically schedule and run Python code. And in that video, I showed a few different methods that you could kind of periodically run a, a, a Python script. So that was a good starting point for this video. I decided to settle upon using AWS Lambda for this task. So with Lambda, I started off very basic. I just wrote a script in Python that could run every hour or so. The next question I had is, could I dynamically change that AWS Lambda function instead of just running every hour to change based on how close the current subscriber count was to 1000? And so with this, I ultimately stumbled upon the Bodo3 library, which is kind of the AWS SDK for Python. And this was super useful and it's really nicely intertwined with the Lambda functionalities. So within Bodo3, you can kind of connect to any sort of AWS service. So in this case, I wanted to connect to EventBridge because that was ultimately defining when my AWS Lambda function triggered. So I used the EventBridge kind of connection in, in the Bodo3 library to allow myself to, if the subscriber count was, let's say, um, you know, 500 subscribers away from 1,000, maybe it would run every hour. But if that number got to 100 subscribers away, then it could run every 30 minutes. And then maybe if it was like less than 25 subscribers away, it could run every five minutes so that there wasn't too big of a gap when that 1000 subscribers was hit before the video would post. And I just tested this with kind of dummy data. I didn't connect it to the YouTube API yet. I kind of just played around with a variable called like subscriber count and just played around with what was happening if it hit these different milestones. One thing that is important to note about using the Bodo3 library in AWS Lambda is that you have to specifically give AWS Lambda permissions to use that Bodo3 library with other services. And this was definitely like a roadblock that I stumbled into at first because I couldn't get the permissions to change the event bridge uh, rate uh, initially. But then I realized that, okay, if I gave uh, the right permissions to the AWS Lambda function, you can basically do anything in AWS Lambda. But by default, they like to kind of take the safer approach and not give you too, too much access in your Lambda function by default. After this, the next kind of step was to actually tie the two pieces together to take the code that was just running by itself, could change a video from private to unlisted or private to public, and connecting that with the code that could check a subscriber count, you know, use a subscriber account to change the rate of how frequently it was checking and running that script, and just, you know, put the two pieces together. So with this, Lambda is a little bit annoying with importing libraries uh, into the functions that you write, but I did go through how to do this in that automatically run Python code video. And ultimately you have to kind of like install a Python library locally. You can use pip to do this with some special keywords and then take that library that's kind of installed locally in your whatever repo you're working on this code and zip all your files together. And then you can upload that zip file to AWS Lambda and kind of have everything contained there. The one thing that's annoying is you can't like then change your script up in the Lambda console, but if you're pretty set on how it's going to run, it's not too, too big of a deal. Uh, and you can always upload new zip folders. So after this, it was really just a matter of doing some sanity checking in Lambda and then releasing this into the wild with the ability to take it from private to public. And really this is the core of what the program did and how this program is running. It's right now sitting on Lambda and I'm hoping that you guys will subscribe to this second channel so that we can see it in action and see if it actually successfully works and, and takes that video when it hits that thousand threshold and within five minutes makes it live. Uh, I did run into a couple hurdles that I, I'm a little bit worried about. And the first is that with the OAuth tokens and the YouTube API, basically you get a token that works and can do the different functions, but it only lasts like 10 minutes or so. But they also give you this refresh token that allows you to get a new um, API token to do all the things. So basically if the API token is expired, what the code does currently is uses the refresh token to get a new one. And then that one can uh, do the necessary things with the YouTube API. Uh, one challenge I was running into is that to get that refresh token, at least initially I had to kind of actually manually go in and like click uh, allow permissions and whatnot. And it seemed like after a while, 
the token was expiring or something was happening bad when this was running in the wild. I did have to do some playing around and tweaking with how this token is accessed. So I'm hoping that with a tweak that allowed offline access that things will successfully work. But I think before I take this type of program and maybe use it to, to publish a video for my this own channel, when this channel hits, if this channel hits 1 million subscribers, I would just want to solidify that the token stuff is not going to just crap out on me. All right, if you have any questions about this video, uh, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you throw it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you have not. I'm probably gonna be working on some tutorials next, so be on the lookout for those. They do take me a decent amount of time to put together, hoping that I can kind of find some time over the next few weeks to, to really organize and prepare some of these things. I am pretty busy with my full-time role at a startup right now, but I really, you know, I'm always thinking about new content. I always wanna be posting as much as possible, so just bear with me sometimes if there's a little bit of gap. All right, until next time, everyone, thank you for joining along. Peace out.